So I just wanted to talk about two books and only two books. We're not going to go over all these other books. We're just going to go over two books that I think are the most important that everyone should read. And in my opinion, are necessary uh, for life. <laughs> and so I will go over these two books. And like I said, I'll only go over two books. And that is all you need because those two books will eventually get you to go for other books. Okay. So we'll talk about the first book, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And this is the first book out of two books that I strongly recommend everyone should check out. Long story short, you don't learn money from school. Here are seven incredibly important money lessons that weren't taught to us in school. Why is it essential? Why aren't we learning about it in school? Arts and it says lie number one, saving money will make you rich. Yeah, it never will. Why would you save it and why would you work for it if they can print it faster than you can work for it? Our schools will never teach you that. Money, I mean, in school you learn about math, science, English, history, physics, chemistry, biology, but you don't, they don't teach you money. Think about it. Like, has, has, have you ever taken classes like, I mean, in high school, were you ever taught about taxes and you know, about taxisms, deductions, credits? Were you ever taught about how to, you know, get a good credit score, like what you need to do to get a good credit score, like interest rates, avoiding debt traps? Um, were you ever taught about investments? How do you buy a stock? How do you sell a stock? How do you short a stock? How do you do, um, how do you do like swing trades? How do you do long-term trades? What are dividend yields? Like, were you ever taught this in school? Or even things like, you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, or even like the most simplest things. Were you ever taught in school how to budget your money? You know, like how to be frugal, how to like understand like, okay, I probably shouldn't buy this and this is why, or I probably shouldn't buy a new car. It's probably not the best idea. I probably should get car a used car. Car will depreciate 63% in the first five years. 10% of that in the moment that you drive it off the lot. You... We're not taught this in school. And that is just the way it is. And it's a conspiracy. Uh, they, they don't want you to learn these things because in general, and this is why people who graduate from Stanford or MIT are so smart at everything, but they don't know a damn thing about money. You know, and because you're not taught money in school and they don't want to teach you money in school. And that is the premise of what this book is all about is that you need to go out of your way to find the knowledge to learn about finance and personal finance because these are things and topics that you were never taught in school. Um, you know, you weren't taught this in elementary school or high school or college, um, you know, and then when you're out there in the field, you have no idea about credit score. You don't have, you have no idea about stocks or investing, about how to buy property, how to do your taxes because none of this was taught in school. And what he's saying in the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is that actually where you learned about money is actually your parents. Um, if Whether your parents are rich or wealthy, it's not just that they're poor or wealthy, it's also that they're teaching you the habits. Um, the habits and, and the way they spend money is what they actually are teaching you about money. That's why people who, are, uh, who have poor parents, uh, it's not just that you're in a poor family, um, it's also because they are doing habits that actually lead to poverty. And people who are wealthy, they have certain habits that lead to wealth. So that's the main kind of synopsis of this book. And what this book, and I'm just going to, again, I'm not going to go over every single book here. I'm just going to briefly go over everything. The point of the book is this book is the start. It is the book that gets you, that opens your eyes. And once you read this book, it sprouts you to other ideas. So you begin to realize, as a, as a point of friend, this is one of the best books on investing in personal finance, but you, this is not taught in school. You know, you don't learn this in school. This te teaches you about the importance of investing in the S&P 500. Now, of course, in this case, he's like, buy Vanguard S&P 500, you know, but it's the same thing. This book is the same as this book and, th and this book. These three books are the same. Buy the S&P 500, set it and forget it. Buy the S&P 500, set it and forget it. Buy the S&P 500, set it and forget it, okay? This teaches you about the mentality of what it takes to be wealthy. You are not taught this in school. This taught, these two books are, are the same book, Your Money or Your Life and The Millionaire Next Door. This teaches you the importance of frugality. You are not taught this in school. This book right here teaches you about day trading, swing trades, short trades. You are not taught this in school, okay? And this is one of the most important things related to investor, investing um, and is a very boring and dry read, but they should teach this in school in a way that's interesting. You are not taught any of this in school, and that is the point of this book here. Okay, now we're on to book number two. Enough of all this. I think the second most important book that everyone should read is this book here. 
the lazy person's guide to investing. And I'll explain to you why. There are two reasons why I recommend this book over everything out there. If you type in Google and you type in best investment books, one of the most common answers you'll get is The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. That this book is a very dry read and is not, in my opinion, it is not for beginners. This is more of like a very, very, it's a very advanced read, a read that you read later on. And in my opinion, a lot of the concepts that he goes over, especially in his concepts regarding price per earning ratio, they are outdated. Like he would never buy Amazon because he'd be like, oh, that's too expensive. Meanwhile, Amazon's up like so like thousands and thousands of percent over the years. You know what I mean? Like you would miss out on a gold rush because he would just never buy anything in tech. But that's beside the point. The point I want to say is this is the best second book that I recommend for anybody. And I'll tell you why. The most difficult part in, um, with when it comes to money is getting over the fear of investing. You know, you're always like, when I was a kid, I would read all the books in the library and I shit you not, I would skip, I would skip through the sections of investing because it scared me shitless because I didn't want to, investing is very scary because you're, you know, it's very scary. And out of all the books I've ever read, this was the book that actually got me started. The way that the book is said is not revolutionary in the sense that you're going to learn some amazing new tactics. No, what he basically says is buy the S&P 500, set it and forget it. And like I said, that is exactly what are said in these two other books too, which is the simple path to wealth. If you actually read it, he's saying buy the S&P, you know, set it or forget it. Simple. You know, that's what he says here. It's the simple, like the little book of common book investing. He's saying you suck at stocks and trades. Don't even try. Just buy my Vanguard S&P 500, set it and forget it. And that's what this book says as well. But the reason why this book is so great is that the way it's worded, and when you, it's hard for me to explain it, you just got to just read it. When you read it, it gives you the courage to start. It is the one book where like, after so many years of me not investing, when I read this book, it got me started. I was like, I can do it. I can do it. And that is why I consider this as the best second book. The rest of the books here will come. They will all come eventually, but everything revolves. This is what gets you started and opens your eyes. This is what gets you the courage to start investing. And that's just my overall two cents on what I feel are the two most important books in finance that everyone should read.